Oh my god. As many as 49 people have been killed and more than 70 injured in a plane crash in Indonesia. There were at least nine Australians on board the plane and four of them are missing. The Australians were travelling to Yogyakarta for a meeting of Indonesian and Australian government ministers, but their plane overshot the runway and burst into flames. Indonesia correspondent Jeff Thompson reports. 
These are the first moments of the doomed Garuda flight just after it crash landed at Jogjakarta Airport. Witnesses said the plane appeared to overshoot the runway before crashing and bursting into flames. Airport staff and emergency workers were able to drag some of the survivors from the wreckage before the flames overtook it. One of my colleagues, um, he kind of uh, told everybody to stay calm and to leave their belongings. And then um, I don't think we were really, well, people were panicked, but not really chaotic. So I think quite a lot of people um, were able to get out of the plane. But many were trapped inside. Television cameraman Wayne Sukado was a passenger, seated near the rear of the plane. He was able to capture these images of the disaster. I, I, I came out from, uh, from the emergency window and um, all passengers uh, out from there. Soon the flames had spread through the wreckage and it was clear no more survivors would be walking out. Instead, body bags were prepared. But given the uh, severity of the crash and the following uh, fire and the like, it's a situation where we should be prepared for bad news. The plane's passengers, including Australian media, police and diplomatic staff, were arriving in Jogjakarta for a planned visit by Foreign Minister Alexander Downer. Of those nine Australians, uh, four of them at the moment are unaccounted for. Sydney Morning Herald journalist Cynthia Bannum was among the passengers. She's reportedly in intensive care in Jogjakarta, suffering from burns. She's stable, but she's sustained some quite serious injuries and, uh, and serious burns. This is the third terrifying aeroplane incident in Indonesia in as many months. The latest disaster is certain to put intense pressure on Indonesia to improve its disastrous public transport record. Jeff Thompson, ABC News, Jakarta. Medical evacuation flights have already left Australia for Indonesia to help treat the injured. An RAAF Hercules flew out of Darwin late this afternoon with medical specialists and supplies on board. And Royal Darwin Hospital has again been put on standby to provide care for the injured evacuees. A team of doctors boarded the flight at Darwin Air Force Base this afternoon. The Hercules will fly to Dili to pick up supplies and more doctors before heading to Jogjakarta. They'll join a second emergency team from Canberra, which includes former Australian of the Year and Burns expert Dr Fiona Wood. This care flight charter has also been kitted out to treat the injured. It left Darwin late today to evacuate three Australians. On board is Dr Mike Donald. He says it's unclear what condition the Australians are in, but once the patients have been stabilised, they'll be flown to Darwin. My primary aim will be to locate the sickest patients and make sure that we deliver the appropriate level of care to the sickest patients. Once again, Royal Darwin Hospital is on standby to treat patients from an international disaster. It treated the injured of both Bali bombings and the Boxing Day tsunami. Uh, the Darwin Hospital is on standby to provide any necessary medical assistance and as you will be aware it is very well prepared for these uh, sad eventualities. The hospital is home to Australia's National Trauma Centre and hospital officials are liaising with other agencies to ensure they're ready to accept patients. It's uh, not unlike it was during the, uh, uh, the sequel to the first Bali where uh, the information was uh, uh, very much clouded by the fog of events. It's not known if the injured are stable enough to be evacuated immediately but it's expected the first lot of patients will arrive overnight. A Department of Foreign Affairs hotline has been set up for concerned relatives and friends. The number is 1800 00 Katrina Bolton, ABC News.